Hey guys, it's Jessica and I am barefaced because we're gonna get ready together. I'm gonna try on a ton of LA Girl makeup. Whew, wow. I've had a lot of requests for this. Let's go ahead and get into it. I was gonna do a big long intro. Why? We all know why we're here. I'm reviewing the makeup. I hope you'll subscribe. I'm gonna put on my uh, headband. My head is way too big for headbands. So I purchased all of this online and so I will link and list prices everything down below for everything I use in the order I use it. Um, but I was shopping online for this stuff and I was overwhelmed by how much they had but I did buy enough for like literally every single thing I put on my face will be LA Girl. So I have already moisturized. I used the my favorite my current favorite daytime moisturizer from e.l.f. Um, I will link below. I don't know the exact name of it. It is amazing. Also affordable ish. It's like $12. I was like e.l.f. You're getting a little pricey for your britches. It's really snowy out, which is why it's so, so bright in here. I haven't changed any of my settings because I know my settings have pretty much been working lately, but it's just so bright out. Even with my things pulled down, it's bright. <laughs> By the way, I will do a check-in at the end of the day so you can see how this makeup wore on my face, um, especially considering, you know, it is a great price point, but if it doesn't wear well on your face, it's like, well, then maybe it's worth spending a couple dollars more or whatever, or just finding a different brand. So the first product we're gonna use is the LA Girl Pro Prep HD Moisturizing Nourishing Face Primer, supposed to be more hydrating for the skin. And like I said, I already moisturized, but this is a white cream, kind of the exact consistency of Elmer's Glue. It does not smell like Elmer's glue, which is nice though. I know like the wet and wild one that so many people love. So many people feel like it, it smells like Elmer's glue. I'm one of those people. Um, I just can't get past it. I don't know. Anyone else like really like that primer but can't stand the smell? Is it the primer I'm thinking of or is it the actual foundation that smells like Elmer's glue? Maybe it's both. Okay, so this is really, it does feel very hydrating. Like it's almost sticky hydrating. I like this consistency. It feels nice. It's not really sticky anymore, so it dried down, but it feels moisturizing and soft. But this is not the kind of primer that's gonna do like pore filling and stuff. This is one I could see myself using a lot. All right, this is where things get a little tricky. <laughs> let me let me get a sip of coffee. I, have a, I don't know where to begin with this. So the entire reason I placed this order was because all of the foundations I own are too yellow. And y'all come for me because you're like, Jessica, just accept the fact that you're not yellow tone. I know I'm not yellow tone. I used to think I was like two years ago. I know that I'm not. However, trying to find neutral toned foundations and or cool tone foundations, seemingly impossible. <laughs> I know that they're out there and I have a few, but like what ends up happening is I take like my Misha BB cream that's gray toned and I just mix it with literally every foundation I own, literally every single one. So I was like, there's gotta, I want to find some good mixers out there because I know I'm not the only one with this problem. So I picked up two of these LA Girl Pro Color Foundation Mixing Pigments. They have other colors too. I think they had like a red and a yellow. I mean, they have all different kinds. So if you want to make yours more yellow toned, maybe you do have one that's too cool toned or whatever. The white, the idea behind the white, of course, is that it will lighten it big time. And this, the blue, will make it more cool toned. Now, I was playing with this on my hand with the foundation I picked up from them and it's definitely going to take some playing with to get it right, but it definitely does cool it down and the white definitely lightens. You guys are going to die when I show you this palette. One of you guys sent this to me and actually this is the first time I'm using it because um, I usually just mix it on the back of my hand, but with this I feel like um, I kind of need to do it on this. Look at this. It's a Mickey Mouse one and a little mixer. Are you freaking kidding me? So. Let me just, I'm gonna put two pumps of this in one of the eyeballs and a little bit of the blue, maybe a little more than I did before. Okay, um, let's just mix it. I don't like that noise. For a frame of reference, that is mixed with the blue. That's the way it is originally. Um, just so you can kind of get an idea. It's definitely more neutral. Um, and I still think it's a little too dark, so I'm gonna try a little bit of the white in with that original mixture. Not a bunch, because I was mixing this on my hand earlier, and it was, I literally just put a teeny tiny dot. And it was really making it pretty light pretty quickly, so just be aware of that. And this, it comes with a ton of product. It's a whole fluid ounce of the color. Look at the difference between that color. I mean, I know to maybe someone that doesn't play with makeup a lot, you might not see it, but to most of you guys, I'm sure you're like, wow. Like, that is completely different, very, very neutral. So, let's try it from here. So... Mm. 
Yeah, that's a lot closer to my skin tone. It ain't perfect. We could sit here all day mixing, but what's nice is about this is, you know, I'll get to play with this with all of my foundations and really get an idea of like, you know, how much do I need? Do I really need the white? Do I need less blue and more white? Do I need, you know, and it'll totally depend on the foundations I'm using too. Now, this isn't the most perfect science experiment because I also haven't just tried this foundation on its own. So like if this pigment is messing with the actual foundation, I wouldn't know because this is how I'm trying it. But again, this was their lightest shade and it's way too dark and like I said, way too yellow. Porcelain maybe looked a little bit more cool tone and that's, again, I was trying to get that one too, but um, even still, I don't think it would have been light enough and I know there are so many of you guys that are even lighter than I am. So just keep that in mind. If you were planning on ordering this, you're gonna need something to mix it with. Y'all, I am digging the coverage though. It's my kind of coverage. like. It definitely evens out the skin tone, but you can still see my skin. So I am like really, really, really digging the coverage of this more than I would have guessed that I would have. So editing Jesse here, I know you're thinking this looks like almost greenish. I agree with you. I'm gonna have to play with how much blue and how much white I put into the actual foundation because I really, in the end it looked okay as you can see here, but it's just gonna take some tampering with because I still feel like it looked kind of yellowish, almost greenish with that blue, which makes sense, of course, if you mix blue and yellow, you get green. So I don't know, it's gonna take some tampering. Let me know if you found a way to make these work better for you. This is something I've been missing in my life and I don't, you know, I like the finish of this. So whether it was the foundation alone or with the mixers, I have a feeling it was more the foundation. This is obviously first impressions, but I always do like, a, updates to these kinds of hauls so stay tuned for a couple months and I will try to update you guys on all of this but I'm really excited to play with that and I'm really excited to play more with this because I'm digging the finish. We have another problem and it is orange and dark. This is the shade Classic Ivory. Now I know they launched, launched new shades and for some reason when I was checking out I didn't see any lighter and based again on the swatches I saw I'm like this is as close as I could get. So I ordered another, <laughs> another color. This is a mint corrector and I thought well it's technically meant to combat like redness and pinkish tones on your skin but I thought well what if I just mix these so we're gonna try again I know this is a terrible science experiment what I'm gonna do is literally take some of this foundation it's very almost salmon-y it really is I'm gonna take some of this did I say foundation I meant concealer and then I'm going to take the mint concealer and we're gonna mix those together. That's probably way too much. Oh, Jesse. Okay, so it's a lot more peachy tone. We could give it a try because I do, that's about the tone of my Bobbi Brown corrector that I love that's kind of more salmon-y. So, interesting. This time I'm going to use a brush though uh, because I'm trying to apply it to my face, etc. cetera. Um, I'm gonna use my uh, Sephora number 57 brush and just kind of dip it in there. That tone is really nice. <laughs> The finish of this is nice too. It's very, again, kind of skin-like, but it definitely covers. I can't believe that worked. I really thought this would be, not based on the brand, because I've heard amazing things about some of these products, but I thought based on these shades and trying to mix things and get it right, that this would be a complete fail, but this is like a complete win, man. I will say the packaging gets crazy messy, so have a makeup wipe or like I always have, I have specific washcloths that I use just for wiping makeup off on and things like that that I just you know I they're just washcloths that I bought a really cheap pack of um, one of the best you know I spent probably a couple dollars on a pack of six dark washcloths but they are the most used thing I own and you know the makeup gets out of them and frankly if it doesn't I don't really care um, because they were really cheap and I bought them specifically so quick pro tip it is a worthwhile couple dollar investment to get some washcloths to just wipe swatch off, swatches off on. They do crease, or at least they initially creased. I'm gonna keep my eyes on them. I don't technically have an under eye setting powder. I'm not sure that they sell one. Um, at least I didn't see it. Uh, I do have a press powder. I don't know that I wanna put that under my, on my under eye, but we'll see when we get there, um, when we get to the setting phase, if I decide to just give it a try. So let's do my brows. That's the order I typically do things. I bought two shades of the LA Girl Shady Slim Brow Pencil. This is my kind of brow pencil. I've 
Over the years, I've experimented with so many different kinds of brow products, but I've realized lately that for me to get the shape that my brows need and to make it look a little more natural, because obviously I darken them a lot more, this is just my natural, this is my natural hair color, my natural brow color. I don't know why my brows are so much slander than my hair. Leave me alone, guys. So I got medium brown and brunette, and medium brown is warmer, a little more red toned than brunette is. Brunette is a little more gray toned, so that is the one I'm definitely gonna go for. Uh, that's typically what I like. So, again, it's got a really small, nice spoolie. I like to brush through, and let's give this bad boy a try. Right off the bat, it's really doing a good job of um, gliding on, but not so much that you don't have any control. It's a nice tone, too. Honestly, this brow product might give CoverGirl a run for its money because I love my Colt CoverGirl um, Define and Fine, or whatever it's called, pencil that's just like this, and I feel like this is staying in place already a little bit better. CoverGirl, sometimes when you brush through, I like that I can brush through and move the color easily because if I get too much in one area, it's it's really forgiving. Then I feel like I put my brows on always after my like foundation um, and I feel like sometimes it can wear away really quickly and so then by the end of my look when I'm done with my eyes, I kind of need to go in and fill in a few areas that rubbed away. So I'm curious to see if this does not rub away. So, I think the shade is nice if you know you're near my shade or you like more of a gray, not gray tone, but you know what I mean, kind of a cool tone. I think it's, can't tell if it's lighting, maybe it's pulling slightly redder than what I usually do, but we'll see as I get everything else on how it looks. But I'm digging the formula, so I'm excited about that. For face, I, I picked out this LA Girl Pro Contour Cream, and it has a highlight and a contour in it, and um, this, I don't know what in the heck. The highlight, I'm gonna try. It looks maybe a little too dark, but that's fine. Um, it's kind of golden toned, but it's still, you know, lighter. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be too dark. Then the contour shade is like hardly darker, and it's like this yellowy olive gold color. I'm so confused, and it's really shimmery. I'm like, what? Maybe I'll give it a try. I'm not excited to try it because it totally doesn't look but I'm just gonna use a stipple brush and get a little bit on and see if I can get it at least maybe we'll just try it there I mean it's definitely adding a little bit of shadow I can't tell if it's adding anything or I'm just rubbing away foundation <laughs> I think it's adding a little bit but this is not I don't know. It doesn't look bad. I actually don't think this looks terrible at all. Again, because it's like this shimmery golden, I don't know, but it doesn't look bad. I mean, I wanted to hate it, but <laughs> I don't think it looks terrible. So I'm not going to put it up on my forehead because um, I, I really don't want to screw the look up. I want this to look nice. I want all of this to work. So um, we're going to try the highlight. Um, how do I want to apply it? Um, I'm going to use my beauty blender and just kind of tap it into there. And by beauty blender, I mean this is a L'Oreal sponge. And just kind of tap it on there. We're gonna put the blush I bought on in a second. It's pretty glowy. Doesn't look bad. But again, this is one of those things that like, unless you're the exact right skin type for this, I don't think they had other shades. So it's like, even if they did, I think it was maybe one other shade. I'm like that's hard to do with something like this and call this a contour. I don't, I don't know. I guess technically it contoured my face. But do you guys see what I mean? Would I mean, wouldn't you be thrown if you open this? It doesn't look like what it looks like online. I'm like, oh, that's not at all what I pictured. But the highlight looks nice too. So Jessica, you better not count your chickens before they hatch. You did not use that phrase right. Well, this is the second time I've spilled coffee on this exact shirt today. Let me go get some water on this. <sighs> okay, crisis averted. So. I am going to set my face with this powder and then I'm gonna put the blush on because the blush seems pretty pigmented and I don't want it to stick to weird areas, but I'm really liking the way that highlight looks. That's awesome. Uh, so this is the LA Girl Pro Face HD Matte Press Powder. I'm not a huge fan of just matte press powders. I like ones that have a little bit of glow to them, but uh, I do kind of feel like I want to make sure this makeup lasts. Um, so I'm just, I'm not gonna really cover the highlight region, but just covering the contour and the blush area for sure. Uh, and I'm tapping a little bit off because this just kicked up a ton. Yeah, it kicks up a little powder. I guess it's not as crazy as I thought. Um, but I just did my T-zone. I'm kind of leaving this area alone. I realized when I put, if you have drier or even just normal skin, 
when I put powder here through here, it just emphasizes texture that's not even really there. And there's no, I don't really need powder in those regions. Um, but I'll really focus on this area and my entire T-zone right there. Um, because I feel like that's where I usually see movement. Yeah, the concealer is definitely still creasing. So I guess I can give this a try. I just want to, I don't know. Sometimes with concealer, I'd rather it crease a little bit than, um, than look crepey. Anyone else? So I'd almost like half the time, I'm just like, I'm just gonna leave it alone because I don't want it to look dry and gross. I'd rather just have to do this every once in a while because it's not that crazy. So I'm actually gonna leave the concealer alone. The blush I'm really excited about. This is their Just Blushing blush. The shade is called Just Playful and this looks like a tone I would wear every single day. It looks so beautiful. It was, I kind of swatched it earlier and it looked really, really nice. Nothing too crazy, but definitely some pigment there. So I'm going to get my brush in there. And whoa, it de it's on a brush. It's really pigmented. Oh, I, I wiped a bunch of this off and it's still crazy pigmented on the brush. So beware. That's a lot, but it's really pretty. I really like this shade. So let me grab my powder brush and just kind of press that in with the powder, see if that covers it a little bit. And if not, we can go back in with our foundation sponge to kind of blend it a tinge. I actually don't mind the more blushy look lately. I've just been kind of digging it, like just more blush than maybe you need can kind of look pretty. I don't know, it's a mood. All right, so I think that looks better. I actually really like this blush. I just like the tone, but just be very careful with how much you have on your brush. <laughs> so, all right, eye primer. Y'all, I am really interested in this next one. It is their Pro Primer High Definition Eyeshadow Primer. It is a white stick. What does this remind you of? Think old school YouTube, think back, think back, think back. It makes me think of the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. It is just a matte white pencil. I mean, that is, that's like, that was my first eye primer. Like that was the first kind of thing I used because I couldn't afford Urban Decay, you know, the primer potion that was really big back five or six years ago. So this definitely has some white. I'm gonna do my finger on this side and then maybe use a brush to blend it on the other. Um, but it state, look at that. That's some coverage and it's not like wiping right away. It's got some stick to it, but it's not, it's not sticky though. But it definitely, I could see that shadow would probably stick to this. Like it feels nice. It's just quick and easy, you know? It's kind of like when you have an eye primer that has a doe foot, you can just swipe it on there and then blend it. Same idea, it's just really quick to swipe on. So it definitely covered discoloration and veining I had on my eye, on my, you know what I mean, my lid and everything. So that is also exciting. Now I have, I bought two of their eye quads. These were both so pretty and I'm digging the packaging. It makes me think of like Great Gatsby, kind of that art deco. Uh, look to it, but it's the LA Girl Eye Lux Quad. This one is called Harmonize, and it's got like these kind of warmer tones. I've been eyeing cooler tones a lot more lately if you saw my Perfect Palette one, but this was just, this shimmer right here looked so pretty. Um, it's kind of like a peachy shimmer. Uh, and it has two shimmers and two mattes, and then the other quad I got was a matte one, and it's called Urbanize. And it just had all of those kinds of shades I would need to complete a look. And I thought, ooh, this is another travel-friendly palette. Like if I were bringing a very shimmery palette, I could just grab, the, assuming this is good quality, I haven't tried it yet. But if this was good quality, I could grab this and I've got a warm tone brown, a cool tone brown, a white and a black. I'm like, that's a smart quad. That is a very smart quad. Why aren't there more quads like this in the drugstore that are good quality? Because I feel like, I feel like Revlon Colorstay had one like this and I tried it and it was just okay. So I'm hoping this one's good. So we are gonna start with this Urban Eyes palette and I am going to, I'm gonna grab this kind of whitish tone just to kind of set the brow bone area especially. So I didn't think that was super pigmented. It swatches okay, nothing crazy. Like I still like my Wet n Wild Brulee even more because I feel like it covers more for that kind of a shade. Um, but that one is definitely more beige than it is white. This one's more white. So I want to go in with this really pretty peach shade, but I am going to apply it with a brush. I always use my finger and lately I've been using a brush, uh, but for some shades it just doesn't work as well on a brush, but I figured let's give it a try. So I'm using the Delium Tools Golden Triangle one and it's their 777 
shadow brush. This is my favorite brush. It's kind of thicker and fluffier, but it's great for packing shadow onto the lid. So this is one of those colors that I love and I gravitate towards because I could take this and a fluffy brush and blend it up into my crease and not use any other color and then throw a little bit of liner and mascara on and go. That's what I do when I am in a rush or frankly just for every day if I'm not filming, which obviously now I'm filming a lot more, um, so I'm doing a lot more, you know, using more matte eyeshadow. But I guess what I'm saying is for every day, one shadow blended into the crease, it's beautiful. It always ends up looking like you're wearing more than one shadow, even though you're not, just based on your eye shape and stuff. It ends up being flattering on everyone in the end, so especially if it's a shade that you know is flattering on you or you really, really like. So. I'm going to go into, I really liked that. That was more pigmented than I thought and I think it applied better with the brush because based on just swatching it and then wiping it on my hand, I'm like, I have a feeling it applied thicker and better with the brush. So I'm gonna go into this warm tone brown in the Urbanized Quad and I'm just going to blend this into my outer corner just a little bit, kind of moving it into the crease. Uh, again, this is a very close shade to that peachy shimmer. So I'm always interested when there's different sized like shadows, like this warm one is really small and the cool one's really big, you know? But the cool one is very similar to that cool tone one I have in my uh, Perfect palette, um, where it kinda can be really deep if you want it to be, but you can diffuse it out to be lighter for sure. Um, like there it is kind of diffused and there it is really thick. So that's really cool. I'm not gonna use it today because that's not really, I don't think it's gonna mesh as well as I want it to with this. Um, but I am impressed with the quality of these. Uh, they, I mean, I think that blended pretty well. I wish I had just a tinge lighter of a shade to kind of blend farther up, but I think it, everything blended really easily. It got on the eyes. I know I only used like three shadows, but um, that's really all I wanted to do for this look. And I think it looks really nice. Um, I feel like it could look like a really high quality shadow. You'd never know you were buying a, you know, I don't know. I feel like there are tons of good drugstore shadows though. So, but this one's really nice. And if you found a quad that really spoke to you, like especially this travely one, that's awesome. So I did buy a liner and I already swatched it and I'm really excited about this. This is their Glide gel liner. Very similar to like what the Urban Decay liners are. Now, listen, I was using the Urban Decay crazy expensive 24 seven pencils. I was using the one, what's the most black one called? That one is not as creamy as I remembered it to be and it did not stay in my waterline. And I was using my Milani one and my L'Oreal one and those stay really well. So I'm like, did Urban Decay reformulate? Because I just feel like it's not as creamy. It doesn't stay as well as I thought. And it was a newer one. Um, like the pencil I have was a newer one. So this is super black. It is a sharpened pencil. I tend to gravitate towards those because they tend to be creamier and blacker. I found a few really good retractable ones but they're usually more expensive, like the Hourglass 1.5 millimeter. <laughs> that is the best eyeliner for tight lining. However, it's just, you know, it's like $18 a pencil and you you use it up in like three weeks. It's insane. So I have it, I use it all of the time. I just hate to mention it because it's so expensive. So I'm just gonna kind of tight line with this a bit and um, see how it performs. I'm gonna put a little bit in my waterline too, just to see. <sighs> Y'all, this is crazy black. I feel like that my tight line ended up becoming more of a thicker line, which is okay, but it's so creamy and it is so unbelievably black. The true test, I'm gonna do the water line on the bottom. Um, it's so black, you guys. So let's put a little bit of shadow down there because I feel like anytime I do my bottom water line, which I've been doing a lot lately, um, and I've gotten so many compliments from you guys, so I'm like, dang, I feel like I should be doing this more often. You guys are like making me blush over here. Uh, but I do wanna go in with a little bit of shadow just to kind of even that out a bit. And actually, I'm gonna try this kind of pinky toned one from the Harmonize palette. It's not really pinky, it's a warm brown. Yeah, it's a warm brown. I don't know why it's a pink. But um, I'm gonna actually use that same, cause I want it to be a little bit, not sloppy, but thicker. <laughs> might be sloppy. Delium Tools Golden Triangle. Again, that's 777. And I'm just going to kind of brush that color lightly underneath that. That's a pretty color. And I'm just going to take it and kind of blend it up into this outer corner. I feel like this blended really, really easily onto that lower lash line. Some shadows I have will grab and tug and they don't glide across my lower lash line, but I feel like this one did a great job. Um, especially considering I hadn't even set my concealer. So before I put my mascara on, I wanted to use this setting spray, um, but actually I wanna apply a little bit more of this highlight because 
I just feel like it's kind of faded away. You know, I did powder my face and I avoided the area, but as I'm putting eyeliner on and stuff like that, so I'm gonna get a little bit more. Yeah, it's actually really pretty, even though it really does swatch as maybe too dark for a highlight on my skin. It definitely has a glow factor and it's really easy to apply with the sponge. It's creamy. I would not enjoy applying this with a brush or my finger. I think it's a little too kind of patchy, but if you can get more of an even application with a sponge, that would be about the only way I would enjoy this because I think any other way it's going to stick and it's just kind of, especially if you swatch it with your finger, you'll see what I mean. It kind of not pills up, it'll kind of gather together in ways that I don't think would be nice to apply with your finger. I mean, maybe tapping it on, it might be okay, but not wiping it on. Um, all right, so the let's use the setting spray. It's the Pro Setting uh, HD Long Last Matte Finish Setting Spray. The not the sprayer on this is very very nice. Mm. And a lot of times I'll do this before my mascara, just because I don't know if my mascara dries and then it re wets and then I get the mascara up you know up here or down below. So it's just kind of nice to get this out of the way and then it gives it time to dry while you're doing your mascara anyway. So the mascara looks really promising. It is the LA Girl Flashy Big and Bold Mascara. It says it's supposed to lengthen and volumize and curl. It's supposed to do it all, which is what I look for in a mascara. Um, it's got more of a natural bristle brush. The packaging is cute with like the gold. Um, before I apply this though, let me brush through my lashes and curl them. You guys know my favorite drugstore mascara is the Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. It is just incredible. So right off the bat, it's definitely helping curl them, like hold the curl up that I just did. It's not clumping. Definitely gonna have to do a couple of coats of this because I can tell right away. It's just one of those mascaras. I pretty much always put more than one coat. No, I always do. I mean, any mascara. Let's curl and try the other side. The brush is a natural bristle brush, but it's like flat and then it's got the bristles. And so like on opposite sides, it's flat. It's, it's kind of interesting. I just feel like I it looks nice with one coat and if you don't mind kind of just a little flutter of lashes I think you'll like it but I like mine to be thicker so I'm hoping that as I go in for a true second coat here that it will thicken up a bit because I'm not feeling like it is it's just not as lengthening as I like either like I can't explain it I feel like I'm continually putting it on and it's getting a little bit thicker at the base but I can't quite get it as you know volumized as it goes to the last half of my lashes um, I mean, I like them to look fluttery. I don't want them to look clumpy all the way out, but do, does that make sense? They're just not as volumizing on the outer parts of it, and that's why I'm like, this will never be like my favorite mascara ever. Okay, let's try I these lip products. So I bought three different kinds. I have one that I am very excited about, but I'm gonna put them all on my lips so you can kind of see them. Um, so the first one I picked up was this matte flat velvet lipstick. Um, you guys know I'm not a big fan of matte lips, but I don't mind putting something like this on if I'm going to put a gloss on top. And sometimes I do matte lips. It's not like I never do it. It's just not my favorite. Um, but this is in the shade Hush, and it's in kind of bullet form. It reminds me of the Wet n Wild lipsticks that are in this kind of same format. It is very, very creamy. So, like, I feel like the Wet n Wild ones are very dry, and they, you have to, like, pull on them, or you have to, like, really warm them up. This is very creamy. So... And it's pigmented. I like this shade of pink. It's like a rosy. So this one's surprising me because it's not, it says it's matte and I guess it is, but I wiped off my lip balm as I was applying it. And so it wasn't, it's, it's got some moisture to this. So this is kind of throwing me for, for a loop because the name matte flat velvet made me think it's going to be really, really matte and flat, but it has some moisture to it. Like it feels like I'm wearing a lip balm. So that's kind of cool, really taking me by surprise. If you're like me and you don't like the feel of matte or drying kind of lipsticks, but again, it doesn't really have a matte look to it. It kind of has like a satin, I really like the way it looks. I'm like really thrown right now. And I like the shade too. So really creamy, pigmented, not bad. And that's pretty good because I've got kind of chapped lips. I'm just getting over a sickness. I was talking about in another video. And you know when you're sick, you just, I mean, you're dehydrated and it just, it takes its toll on your lips. So mine are almost better, but they're definitely still a little bit chapped. So this one, I know that I'm probably not going to like, but I wanted to try it because I know a lot of you guys like it. Um, and I'm not going to just write something completely off just because I don't like it. Uh, it's the matte flat finish pigment gloss matte gloss that always makes me laugh but uh it's in the shade dreamy it's got a really flat doe foot which i actually love and you guys this is like creamy like frosting no creamier like thin frosting <laughs> um but yeah let's just 
give it a try. So this is one of those formulas that, it, again, it feels kind of creamy. I got a little high here, so don't make fun of me. <laughs> um, but it just kind of still has that like satin finish to it that's a little more comfortable to wear. It makes your lips, at least upon first application, look a little healthier than they are. But I have a feeling it's gonna dry down, and so that's when I'd be like, no thanks. So um, I'm gonna try these other products on because they're the ones I'm really excited about. But uh, yeah, it's starting to dry. So this is one of those, it's gonna dry down a bit, and it's I'm already now starting to see the lines in my lips come through, so. All right, these are the two I'm pumped about. Uh, so I've got these Lipify Stylo One Swipe Intense Creamy Colors. Y'all, when I swatched this when I opened the box of goodies that I bought today, I was like, what in the heck? My hand is a mess, but let me just show you. These are the like creamiest, most intense, but like almost glossy lipsticks I've ever, oh my gosh. I wish you guys could feel how soft and like easy that was to blend on. So let me try this one on. This is in the shade, I have two of these shades. This is in the shade Giddy. It's so, uh, This is like the exact opposite of a liquid lip color, I feel like. It's so thin. Well, I guess liquid lip colors can be really thin too. But it's so thin and creamy and almost has like a glossy-ish finish. Not glossy because like I think of the Lancome Labsolu lip lacquers that I love. Those are like glossy but so comfortable. Like this is, this is my kind of a freaking lipstick. So I really like this shade. I think it's really pretty, really pink. Be perfect for especially spring coming up. Um, so I will definitely get use out of that, but I want to try this red one on too. Y'all know red lips are like my home. This is more of like, I should say like a reddish melon. It's in the shade Brave. Um, it's really, really bright and poppy. Again, I feel like this would be a great spring color. Who do I think I am? I just like threw that on real fast like it wasn't a crazy bright color, but the lines weren't crazy bad. Um, I love this kind of a color. Again, it's really bright. It's almost like instead of red, it's more like pinky fuchsia, but with a slightly warmer pool. It's really pretty though. These are really comfy. I do think with the shade like this, you're probably gonna want a lip liner because it is creamier and you don't want it to move all the way outside, but it's just so comfortable. You're gonna need to reapply these. These are not the kind of lip products that you're not gonna. I didn't really see any glosses that pulled to me online. And frankly, I'm trying to remember, I feel like I didn't really see any glosses. Even though it's not a perfect match because it is more pink, I'm gonna put it on just because it's a little more comfortable. I'm gonna put on the Giddy shade. So we're gonna do a check-in today at the end of the day and see how all of this wore. I'm already noticing right off the bat a little bit of texture here um, with that foundation. And it could be the powder as well because I powdered that. Um, so again, I'll play with this. That's why I like to do updates because one day of using something obviously isn't enough to truly tell your own feelings because you might try it with a different primer or a different powder or no powder or no primer. You know, there's so many different things, especially with face products. But um, right off the bat, I can tell you this brow color, I didn't feel the need to reapply, which is huge because I always, with my CoverGirl, go back in and fill in little areas, especially on the bottom that maybe get a little wonky once I put eye primer on and eyeshadow and all of that. I, it just stayed in place. So that is very exciting to me. So LA Girls, some of their products are sold on Ulta's website, by the way, and I know that others are not. So it's gonna be one of those things that, you know, depends on what you want. If a lot of what you want is not sold on Ulta, it might be worth placing the order on LA Girl. I think I ended up getting free shipping. Of course, I bought a ton of stuff, but um, it's just something to keep in mind that if you, you know, really, want a lot of the products, then it might be worth it. So I'm gonna go about my day. I need to edit some videos. My room is a mess with PR. I need to disperse that where it goes. Um, and I'm doing some video planning for the rest of the week, but I will check in later today. So I just finished filming, but I figured I would show you this in natural light. It really looks nice. Like, I feel like it, my foundation matches my skin a lot better than normal. I don't think it's perfect, but it's better. Um, and then like then compared to other foundations, I guess is what I mean by normal brows I think that color looks nice and the mascara like I was saying it doesn't look bad It definitely curls. It's black. It separates, but it's just not as volumizing as I like so but I think the shadow looks nice <clears throat> um, The highlight like look at that the Blush looks great. So I figured it would be helpful to show you this in daylight and not just the studio ish light So you can kind of see it Okay, it is like almost 10 p.m. So it's probably been on about 10, I'm trying to think of when I put it on, probably been on about 10 hours. Um, 
looks like the foundation like I told you, you can see a little texture there, which I could see before. I definitely feel like a lot of my skin has just naturally come through, if you notice right there. Um, and I don't think I've been like really touching my face a ton. Definitely my chin and nose. Foundation always wears off there, so I don't really hold that against a foundation. But when it's wearing off here, I don't usually have foundation wearing off. So I liked the finish of the foundation, but I think in the end, it's not necessarily the longest wearing. But of course, I'm going to try it again with a different primer because obviously I was using it with the new primer as well, and it could have just been that uh, primer. So that's something I'll have to update you guys on. I feel like the eyeshadow, it stayed exactly the way it was. I don't think the liner stayed very well. You can see that it wore off on the waterline. It stayed great on the actual lids, but if you're looking for this for a liner for your waterline, this isn't it. Um, but I think just a regular liner, I mean, it stayed really, really black, I think. Um, brow products stayed pretty well. Mascara actually held a curl pretty darn well. Again, I don't think it's my favorite, but like even from here you can see my lashes. And I've certainly tried plenty of mascaras where you cannot see my lashes. So, or they're just kind of straight. So kudos to that for curling, but I just don't think it's super volumizing. I'm trying to think what else. The concealer, I don't think it weared very well. It definitely kept creasing. So there were a couple times throughout the day I would do this. Now, again, I didn't set it. But I've tried plenty of other concealers that even though they crease, they still have some coverage. That, it just, I don't know. It's not super flattering. It's not the worst I've ever tried. But it, again, it'll never be my favorite. So again, back to the eyes. I feel like the eye primer did well. The eyeshadow did well. I'm excited to try the eye primer with other eyeshadows. And the eyeshadows with other eye primers too. But I think they both work really well together. And then kind of lastly, the bronzer highlight. I feel like the highlight stayed really well. The bronzers or contour, whatever in the world they were marketing that as. Um, I think it's still there. I don't think it changed a ton. Um, obviously, I said it with the powder. But you can see that my natural oils still broke through with that powder. So if you're looking at that powder thinking it'll be great for you if you have oily skin, I, it might not be enough because I feel like I put a lot on my T-zone and you can definitely still see the oils breaking through and I don't have oily skin. So that's something to keep in mind. But I think overall the things I was the most impressed by were the eyebrow pencil. I really liked those lip products even though I'm obviously not wearing them now. Um, oh, the blush. I think the blush stayed on pretty well. Again, I'm excited to try that blush with a different bronzer and highlight um, and with, I guess, maybe a foundation that stays on better um, because I love the tone of the blush so much. So the blush I really liked, the eyeshadows and eye primer. I think the liner was still good even though it's not great for waterline. Um, yeah, but that like highlight contour, I'll play with it a couple more times, but it's not, I mean, the highlight was okay, but I have plenty of things that do that. Um, and look even better. And then the contoury bronzer stuff is just not quite the right tone, I don't think, for me. But hopefully that helped. So I hope you enjoyed this style of video. I know these can be kind of long, but it's really hard for me when I'm trying so many products. I don't want it to just be quick jump cuts between everything where you're not really getting to really hear my thoughts. So I try to condense it, but it's hard because there's a lot to say. And a lot of you guys have questions about, you know, different things that I try to keep in mind when I'm reviewing them and I try to answer them ahead of time. So I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you'll subscribe before you leave so that you don't miss any of my future makeup review videos. And other than that, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.